Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. Today we have a special guest. First time ever doing any type of podcast type of video thing. Josh from Diservations. How are you, Josh? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for coming, me, coming on. We have plenty of great topics to talk about. And let's get started right after the intro. So, before we get started, you know, hey, you have a fantastic website, Diservations. Is that, am I saying that correctly? Diservations? That's why I have it in my head. It's Diservations. Diservations. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of a combination of Disney and Reservations because I have that calculator on there. <laughs> Got you. Diservations.com, where he does a whole bunch of theme park news. Um, yeah, why don't you tell us about, about your, your website here, how you started, what your um, your, your passions um, for it or how yeah, did so, it come about? Yeah. So I, I've been a web designer and developer for a long time. Uh, before that, you might see this. There's a trombone back there. I, I have a another career as a musician, um, but I never built a site really for myself. And being a fan of Disney, I thought, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and build my own labor of love for something I, I, I truly do love. And that's Disney and Universal and theme parks. Yeah. Well, I you did a good job because the site looks very professional. I mean, fan. I appreciate and that. You, you you do constant updates on. It. I mean, like uh, like you're like one of the probably one of the only people out there that's close to the Universal Frisco Park. So uh, you're doing good updates on that on the website. That, yeah, we're really excited about that. that. Yeah, the um, I, you know, a couple of years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, um, I just started getting hit with so many texts really early in the morning saying, Hey, you know what? Universal is coming to Dallas. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I did a little more digging and realized it's less than two miles from our house. Wow. You can walk there. Well, yeah. Um, well, Texas weather in the summer is, uh, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, I go out there probably every week, week or two to check out the, uh, the updates. I'm, I'm actually thinking about investing in a drone so I can get some aerial shots. <gasps> Oh my gosh, we'll have to call you bio dissertations. Yeah, I that is <laughs> those are lofty goals living up to bio reconstruct. I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't put myself in that league. But um yeah, it I, I went out there a couple of days ago, in fact yesterday, um, and I noticed that a ton of work has happened in the last week. Um they paved a lot of the parking lots for the for the day guests. Um oh nice. That's yeah. smart because they, they that's what they did at Epic too. And that's usually what the workers will use until the rest is done. So that makes sense that they pave those first. That's pretty cool. So the, that means they're, they're going vertical then in some aspects, right? It's actually gone vertical, but not the vertical everybody wants to see. It's the vertical going down. In, in North yeah. Texas, our soil is garbage. It's clay-based. Mm -hmm. So building in it, like I, every house in my neighborhood has foundation issues. Mm -hmm. um, so what they're doing is they're going down, they have moss utilities out there for the last few months, and they're they're uh, making sure that the irrigation and the drainage is is in in place before they do any building. I did notice this week, and it's on my Twitter, I haven't posted an article about this, but excuse me, X, um, <laughs> that there's a lot of drilling rigs out there. And I think I think the purpose for those is they're going to start dropping in pilings. And, and, and what that is, you'll forgive me for use, using construction terms, my stepfather owns oh, a construction no. company. Go ahead, um, yeah, so the viewers but, of the channel are very uh, in tune with the construction terms. So yes, keep going. Excellent, so they're dropping in, it, it, the drilling rigs are all over the site now. I think I counted like three or four yesterday. So I'm thinking, nice. I'm thinking that there's probably, um, they're gonna start adding, uh, you know, pilings, drilling holes for pilings yeah. and then so, at that point, I think I think construction is going to go vertical in the way that we can see it. Yes, and uh, again, for those uh, who who uh, are new to the channel and who are watching the pilings, you can uh, guys can remember those from uh, when they're going for the Fast and Furious coaster. I was pointing those out, uh, those pilings for the where the footers are now. And that was a very exciting process. They were digging deep for that one. Yeah, so, and that's yeah, pretty cool to see uh, that going on in Frisco too. That that's an ex that's really exciting in a completely different way. This is 
this land has some contours, but nothing like Universal Hollywood. And I'm really that coaster when you posted those pictures last week, I was just like, man, this is it's gonna have the best views of any coaster ever, probably. They are fantastic. I know it's like on the side of a hill, that's like insane. And then the fact with really, those supports, they did just kind of kind of appear like overnight. I mean, in the period of like a day and a half, it went from like nothing down there to like all those supports. And I'm like, wow, that's a uh I went from like zero to hundred really quickly over there. And that's why I go out to Universal Kids probably every seven to ten days is because you never know when something big is going to happen. Yeah, and and they're just, so doing the theme park. Then you also I remember you also mentioned they're doing something. It, there's like a community next to it, right, or near nearby. Yeah, Aren't they're like adding like a private road or a gate or something or a walkway. Um, I don't think there's going to be. Pictures. I don't know if there's going to be any sort of. A walking trail other than traditional street crossings, but across the tollway, it's not a freeway, but a tollway, there, there's going to be a mixed use development that is going to be one yes. of the biggest in all of North Texas. Uh, there's going to be, oh, really, yeah, it's, they have one a few miles down the road where 50,000 people live. Um, mm -hmm. There's restaurants, there's going to be retail um, office space, um, you know, condos and homes, single family homes. Now, this is interesting. That now I'm now I get into my urban studies and planning brain. That's my degree and season. So, do you know how many units this mixed use development will be? I do not know. It's been a while since I've done any research into it. It's called Fields West. If anybody wants to research that, I've I think I've included a link or two on some of my uh, Universal Kids articles. Fields uh, but West, Fields West is the development. And just to uh, oh, this is a this is nice. It's a little screen share here. Boom! Here we go. Fields West, everybody, look at that, huh? Ooh, okay. Fifty-five acre urban village. That's actually well. Quite it's big. gonna be. It's gonna be. There's a fields community of twenty-five hundred acres. So this development includes Universal Kids. It's also going to include some other things over time. There's, okay. um, it's an ongoing so yeah, it looks development. Like, it's like 1,200 residencies. That's nice. Wow, this would be pretty nice. This is a very cool. And this is actually less than two miles. It's it's actually closer. It's on my way to Universal Kids. So it's going to be, the, the one about six, seven miles south of this has great dining. You go in there, they have, obviously you have to park in parking garages because the development is, is just mm. so crammed in with with restaurants and 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 high rises that uh i assume the same thing is going to happen here that there's going to be ample parking and that that brings up an interesting interesting topic because a lot of people are focusing on universal and mm -hmm. they're, they're worried about the traffic that's going to be coming to frisco as a result mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. universal kids is going to have on average 7500 visitors a day the traffic for that is negligible when you have something like this right next door. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Wow, yeah. I mean, look at just all these parking lots and just in this video. That's that's pretty cool. I'm gonna yeah. look more on that later. Well, yeah, but um, wow. So yeah, it's funny because you know people mentioned you know, Universal Kids and like you said, the neighbors uh, and the city hall meetings or council meetings, you know, complain about that. But I've never once heard about this you know, the larger mixed use project. Um, so that's um. You know, Dallas Fort Worth has a pretty decent history of, of theme parks with Six Flags over Texas and Arlington, which is about 40 miles mm -hmm. away. But over time, Six Flags has has really gone downhill. And in the last decade, yeah. there's actually been teenage brawls in the parking lot. There was a shooting there yeah. a number of years ago. Terrible. So I think a lot of people who aren't like us, who don't appreciate mm -hmm. going to theme parks and and uh, and appreciate you know everything that goes along with that, they just focus on the negative uh, that a, a park would bring. Now, mm -hmm. but this one is really different from any other theme park ever built. The demographic for this park is three to nine year old kids and their families. Exactly, like a Legoland type of vibe, but a universal Legoland type. Of vibe. Yeah. Uh, I, but I th I think it's actually going to be a little, you know, focused on kids even younger than Legoland. I think Legoland appeals, you know, it, 
the one I went to in uh, in California, I mean, had some decent mm-hmm. rides. I'm not sure it's going to. Oh, be they on that. definitely did have some. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I guess the two Legoland does have like a a, like a wild mouse coaster. That is the one of their newest ones. Yeah, that's the and this one just have like a troller coaster. But the lands, I'm excited for SpongeBob Land. You know? Yeah, yeah, especially bikini bottom. Especially in summer here, um, we we're actually having the first summer in a number of years where it's not brutal. Uh, today we were in oh, the 80s. Good. Oh, wow. Yeah. Today we're in the hundreds. <laughs> but the last couple of years we had, uh, they were counting on, they were hoping that uh, for 90 degree days because we had so many consecutive 100, 100 degree days. And so I don't know how, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that Universal is going to take that into account. They're going to have misters yeah. and, and covered queues and things like that. I would hope that most mm-hmm. of the attractions are, are more indoor than outdoor. And, and we could always ask Alicia Stella about that. She She's promised a, a video is coming soon. So maybe we'll get more information from her. Yeah. And uh, no matter what, I know there'll be a long line for that Rapids type ride that looks to be in the middle of the park because I'm sure... If they made that like, which I'm sure they might, anything like um, Popeyes at the Universal Orlando, then I'm that should get you covered through probably the at least the first half of the day. <laughs> yeah, water rides are going to be a premium out there. Um, and 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 the other interesting thing about this is, uh, originally we thought it was going to be a year-round park, but mm-hmm. um, at a town hall meeting, one of the Universal VPs actually said that they're going to close it for a decent amount of time in the off season. And instead of worrying about instead of worrying about maintenance on a nightly basis like Disney and Universal have to do, mm-hmm. they're going to focus on doing a majority of the maintenance in these downtimes when they're closed because it's so cold. Makes sense. Wow, yes, I that's something I actually didn't know. So in the wintertime, it'll likely just be closed then. You know, we have really mild winters, and I think mm-hmm. for the most part, like I in December, you can count on it being 60 degrees many days. Mm-hmm. Um, but last year, when we were experiencing 118 and 119 heat indexes, mm-hmm. in February before that summer, we were at minus two with actual temperatures. That's in Fahrenheit. So you can imagine that the parks could not be open. And the other concern is in the springtime, um, in the evenings, you know, we mm-hmm. get we get some really bad weather here. We get tornadoes and hail. Mm-hmm. So uh, they'll have to take in yeah. all those different weather types into account as they build this. Yeah, that'll be interesting because, um, yeah, it's interesting. I, I didn't even think about a potential non-year-round thing. That's, it makes sense, though, especially because, yeah, you're right. You know, especially, well, anyone, but especially younger kids, you know, definitely can't have them out in 119 degree heat end heat indexes well those would be the high, days. high humidity high humidity and that's terrible for the children <laughs> yeah but i that's why i said i think and i think it's gonna be open in summer regardless of those mm-hmm. temperatures but i think that mm-hmm. you'll probably see them bring in oh misting stations and have covered queues yeah. and, and other ways to keep people cool yeah i'm thinking maybe i'm just, i wonder hmm because okay, that come to the heat of the day is like what like a three something usually. Is that right? Well, you no. Know, so I walk my dog three times a day. My dog owns uh-huh. me, right? He's in charge of me. Yeah, and when yeah, I go out in the summer like at eight o'clock in the morning, it's already mm-hmm. it's already in the high eighties, low nineties on, on many mm-hmm. days. Yeah. But like the peak temperature, is that like around like what time would you yeah. say like the peak peak temperature is? Well, probably three or four, but it's yeah. it's hot all day. I wonder, yeah, because I'm trying to figure out like operationally, like, I wonder like, if they know if it's going to be really hot, like maybe if they had opened like an hour early and closed like an hour early, try to you know avoid those peak times, or they just say suck it up and people, maybe just people just like go inside or something. But I'm just curious how if they just like, you know, adjust and i don't i know they have certain rules where what they can't like open before a certain amount of time and close later than a certain times it's part of that agreement but i'm curious how they would handle those extreme uh temperature days even if those, it's just, like, those are really good hours. questions and i'm sure you know you don't you don't put a multi-million dollar property into dallas without thinking about those things so oh, I'm, yeah. I'm interested to see what they do um you know trip typically universal 
even in Florida and, and California, they close early. So I'm expecting this park to be yeah. uh, closing pretty early, especially when you consider the demographic of three to nine year old children. Um, yeah, that's really because a bummer because my family, um, mm -hmm. you know, we have an adult son now. We've lived in Frisco mm -hmm. for 20 years. It would have been so great to have this 15, 20 years ago. But we would like to go over there. It would probably be season, you know, annual pass holders. Mm -hmm. I'd like to go over there, over there on a Friday evening and just hang out. But I'm worried that it's probably going to close at 7 o'clock most nights. Yeah, and see, that's, that makes sense. Because, yeah, Hollywood and stuff, they close, especially in the slower since close, close like at 6. So... That probably, that probably. I wonder if again on those those hotter days, like when if it's just like I would say a couple of days, but they just know. I wonder if they'll just close it four or something instead of seven, it's just for that day. Um, that'd be interesting. That'd be. I will have to see, but okay. um, but yeah, I'm, I'm curious because how close? So so this mixed use development, the field was. Is it like? What you say? It's like across the street, like literally across the street from the park. So we, what we, the main thoroughfare through Frisco is called the Dallas North Tollway, and mm -hmm. that starts south of Dallas and it keeps extending. When we first moved here, there was no Dallas North Tollway. Mm -hmm. Right across, it's literally on the other side of the freeway is Fields West. So gotcha. I, wow. I envision, so I envision a lot of people on days that this park closes early. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will be going over to Fields West and probably grabbing a bite to eat or doing mm -hmm. some shopping. Yeah, because like that. that's going to say that that Fields West is basically going to act like as this park city walk type of situation because that, you know, that was that close. So that's an interesting dynamic right there. Yes. And and like, what's interesting about the, the, the tollway, if I could take a second to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go they're ahead. mitigating the traffic already because they've they've added a northbound exit that will take people right into the mm -hmm. parking plaza. And I'm not even sure if they have to of uh, parking plaza Fields West or the park? no for the for the theme park. For the, for the okay, that's cool. So northbound traffic, which most people will be coming from the north uh, from the south, mm -hmm. um, they they don't even have to go through a, a, tra a traffic light when they get off the freeway. We, if you've been to Universal in, in Orlando, you know that that parking garage, getting into those parking garages, is a is a bit of a nightmare. This is mm -hmm. going to be as smooth as be as can be. Yeah, sounds so. Basically, so that's kind of like with Disneyland then, because Disneyland, Disneyland, you get off the freeway, then they have this like flyover ramp that takes you over ball roads. You have to wait in that long light, and that sounds like it's what's going to happen. Something similar going to happen over here with this park, correct? The no, it, to Universal Frisco. They've actually added a new exit, and I I think it mm -hmm. might be open. Um, the tollway there is actually brand new, and they've they've already come in because of Universal and added a new mm -hmm. off ramp that's going to take people right into the uh, to the parking plaza for the for the park. Yeah, so that'd, that'd be quite nice. That'd be uh, quite wait. Yeah, so again, those people that are upset about the traffic. Should uh shut up. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. Because yeah, come on. Yeah. And if I could say one grow. more thing, if I could say one more thing about what's going on in the area, the mm -hmm. PGA of America has mm -hmm. moved in just north of Fields West. Oh wow, and like uh like uh headquarters, like uh offices? They're they're American headquarters. They're well, I guess it's their oh. world headquarters. Mm -hmm. Um, and oh, they wow. put in they put in two golf courses up there. One of which is going to host the PGA Championship here in a few years. So, oh, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. So the area is just booming, and um, it, the traffic is is the the traffic is has gotten bad way before a, a kitty park has moved in. So mm -hmm. when we first moved here, we wow. could drive anywhere in town in, in fifteen minutes. Now it it takes a little longer. <laughs> Yeah, well, so yeah, yeah, it seems like early. You know, so picked a great spot because up and coming area with a lot of potential residents. So it seems like, yeah, this park should easily get to uh, its capacity limits because of a lot of people to pull from um, just from that area alone, it seems like, let alone the rest of Dallas and Fort Worth and whoever wants to come visit. There'll be a yeah. lot of people there. They're not going to have any problem filling out what they think is a $7,500 per uh, 7,500 guests per day. Uh, attendance. Yeah, man, that's a, 
That's incredible. I'm I'm very excited for uh well your constant updates on this, and to eventually take my eventual child that I will have over to Dallas because you're right, it's not too long of a flight. So I, I've been to Dallas and it's a very cool spot. Although I must say, the one time I was in Dallas I had a good good time. Although we did get lost a couple times with the uh, freeways, but mm-mm. other than that. There was a time it was in the spring, so not only was there a tornado warning, which I thought was really cool. <laughs> I was like, "Oh my gosh, tornado warning!" I saw this great lightning strike. I'll never forget it. But then it was just we we're playing. My cousin and I were playing basketball. It was in the evening, and it wasn't even, it wasn't even that hot. But it was that it was really a warm wind, and it was really humid. And I remember we came back to the hotel, and I just knocked out. I was. It took him that humidity, man. It took me out, man. So props to you for uh, adjusting to those pretty, pretty extreme and certain times weather conditions over there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, we all. Everybody asks me how I, how I live in Texas with the heat, and I say we all stay inside. It's just AC all summer. Mm-hmm. You know, for the for the few hours a week, I'm out mowing the lawn, or and you know, I walk the dog every day. You get acclimated mm-hmm. to it, but it's gonna be something that. When people, if, if you're coming in from out of town to, to do Universal Kids, you're going to want to make sure you prepare. Uh, you're going to want cooling towels. Anything that you would use mm-hmm. in Orlando, you're going to need even more Texas. of that here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, funny because, you know, for many years, people were like, why isn't Disney open something in Texas? And, of course, like Universal's been doing it lately. Universal's been beating them to it. So... <laughs> That's a uh, be interesting development on on that. Uh, I, you see, know what I think some, something down there. Rather than like I, I I see the the possibility of Disney not opening theme parks, but mm. to do more like the DVC properties that they have. Yeah. In in Alani and and Hawaii and in in the Carolinas and in Florida, I could see them opening these resorts with you know, lazy rivers and water slides and things like that mm-hmm. in, in many cities along the, in the South. Um, I know that honestly, they, they should, because it's a way to expand the Disney brand um, and give the Disney luxury without, you know, I mean, to a full like theme park, but it's in, I mean, honestly, I still think they should do that here. Like maybe San Diego or even uh, Santa Monica, you know, like it's uh, sure it's Disney that's close, but you know, you don't have, a, we don't really have, Disneyland doesn't have the, like, a full like Alani style resort. So if, whether it's Palm Springs or Santa Monica or Long Beach or San Diego, I think that'd do very well anywhere. Like you said, I mean they're getting into the neighborhood business again. You know, they did Celebration decades ago, and they 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 sold that off. But now they're getting into these these uh, communities, these master plan mm-hmm. communities. So I don't think it's a it's a far stretch to think that they could, especially with the DVC model. Mm-hmm. Add these resorts throughout the country, um, and I'd I'd be you know I don't if they put one in Dallas I w- I would do a staycation every few months for sure. Oh yeah, cause, you know it's definitely it's one. It's always nice to get away from your home a little bit, but also especially with the you know, luxury of a Disney or Universal property um, that really treat you right. Absolutely. And speaking of Disney, D twenty three is coming up. You mentioned you were not going this year. As I'm, I am not either. I'll be live streaming it from home. Mm-hmm. But um, what do we think is happening at D23 in terms of the parks panel? What uh, what are your predictions, hopes? Uh, what do you think is happening this year? Well, it's it's really interesting that they're they're at, they're adding this musical element to it. Mm-hmm. Right, it's mm-hmm. it's going to be in the Honda Center for the first time ever. There's going to be mm-hmm. a massive amount of fans in there. Um, I hope the music is great. I hope the, the presentation doesn't get bogged down in the pageantry. I want concrete details like we all do. Um, mm-hmm. there, there is real angst among Disney fans when it comes to the term blue sky. I fully expect to get some possible blue sky concepts, but they need to hit us with some great tangible concrete plans for things that are no doubters, right? Um, exactly. And I think one of, the, one of the first ones we can talk about with confidence would be tropical, tropical Americas and Animal Kingdom. Mm-hmm. 
Um, they've already been on, the Imagineers have been on fact-finding missions to South America and to the Yucatan mm -hmm. Peninsula. And there's, per, yeah, permits been filed for that. So that seems pretty guaranteed. Yeah. So I, I think, I don't know where that's going to fall in the excitement level. I'm not, Animal Kingdom, you know, a lot of people call it a half-day park. It's one of my favorite parks because of what Joe Rody did. Same. I love that park. It, the, the amount of details, like you're, when you're looking at the tree of life and you're a hundred feet away, you're still seeing parts of the tree of life, you know, all around, you know, discovery mm -hmm. Island. And I just, it's, it's one of my favorite places to go to find details. So I think I'm worried about IPs coming in that aren't animal based. Yeah. I think in Canto needs absolutely needs to be in a park. It's a great movie. It's, it's popular, mm -hmm. especially with families. I just I just hope that Imagineers take make it a labor of love and make it work with the original concept of Animal Kingdom. Um, and I'm I'm actually happy that the Indiana Jones ride is not a clone of, of Yes, what you have I out know, there. right? Yeah. Yes, it, that's the key, you know. Uh, I I there's I, I'm gonna give you a caveat in, in a bit when we talk about Magic Kingdom. I don't mm -hmm. want in the domestic parks for there to be cloned lands or, or attractions i'm not mm. a fan of that. i want to i want a compelling reason to go to disneyland mm. you know we go to disney world more than we go to disneyland but when we go to disneyland i want to feel fresh and unique and not just oh well we've done this already in, in florida mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense uh but sticking to animal kingdom i think we probably find out the zootopia attraction coming in to replace uh, it's tough to be a bug which is a real killer for me because man I know. There I'm secretly, uh, secretly hoping that one's been canceled, but I probably had. <laughs> Joe Rody himself has said that there aren't enough kid attractions in Disney and in, in Animal Kingdom. Mm -hmm. As great as It's Tough to Be a Bug is, when my five-year-old son saw that for the first time, he was on the floor by the end of the show. He was terrified. <laughs> I, posted, uh, I was too. <laughs> I posted a video that he took on our last trip in April uh, mm -hmm. to Instagram and it immediately conjured so much fear and, and, and bad feelings among people. They were like, I remember this as a kid. I can't believe I forgot all about this. It was like something that they had put out of their mind. Mm -hmm. So Zootopia, it's a, it's a decent IP, you know, it's, it's been used in, in Hong Kong Disneyland and, and looks fantastic over there. It's going to be just a, a show here. I don't know how it's going to fit in with the tree of life. Um, I'm I'm really sad to see it's tough to be a bug go. Um, I think if we're talking about things that could could blow us away that aren't really on anybody's radar, I think a drone show. You know, we yes, have, that'd be so nice. It's the one park that doesn't have any kind of nighttime vibe other than going to Pandora and, and enjoying the, the the iridescent colors and, and lights. Mm -hmm. I think a drone show checks all the boxes for, for Animal Kingdom, right? We have, we're not scaring the animals, but we're giving people a reason to stay in that park past, you know, sunset. And I would love for there to be a drone show or a nighttime show to come there. Um, the yeah, other because uh, the drone shows are beautiful. And that way, again, yeah, you don't scare the animals. So it works out. We we were there in a June. My my family flew flew out so we could do pass holder previews of Tiana's, and we got to see Disney Dreams that soar over over the uh, the lake at Disney Springs, and and it was just phenomenal. And they need to bring that in the park. And I think that I think maybe fingers crossed that we do get a drone show announcement uh, for the parks because it's going so well out of Disney Springs. And I'm not sure if it'll be at Animal Kingdom. Maybe it's over Galaxy's Edge. You know, maybe we get that. Well, that'd be nice with the, the X-Wings. Those are cool. Absolutely. I mean, but the the, the possibilities are endless. Those things, I, I think it's probably got to be cheaper than the pyrotechnics, than the fireworks, right? So from mm -hmm. a, it still entertains, but it doesn't blow the budget every single night. So I'm, I'm hoping, mm -hmm. fingers crossed, that we get some drone show news. Um over at Epcot, I think I think it's a given we're going to get Test Track 3.0, right? Because they've already closed mm -hmm. shop on that. I hope we go back to a, a more fun version of, of Test Track. Mm -hmm. 
something that isn't so like they Epcot always tries to do the edutainment. I thought there was too much education in Test Track 2.0 and not enough fun. Mm -hmm. When I ride that ride, I'm thinking, okay, let's get to the speed section at the end because it just doesn't, it didn't feel like Test Track 1.0 with the, the crash test dummies for me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and the, uh, probably, you'll probably get some new concept art for that one, which uh, looks, the first piece looks pretty good um, in my opinion. It looks pretty nice. Yeah, but we've all been bit by the Disney concept art in the past. Yeah. We? True. Yeah, we sure have. The festival center <laughs> that got killed by COVID. Uh, that mm -hmm. beautiful architecture with the gardens on the second story. So, Oh, uh, gosh. Don't remind me. <laughs> uh, I think Epcot might also, you know, four years ago, they announced that we were going to get a an updated Spaceship Earth. We should have gotten that, but COVID killed it. It was mm. going to be a two-year uh, refurb. So we should be two years into a brand new, you know, spaceship earth and we haven't gotten it. So maybe now, maybe because Tiana's has introduced so many fantastic animatronics, maybe we get a, a, a spaceship earth that incorporates the a 1000s audio animatronics, you know, Ooh, something that'd be very nice. Um, I, do we bring it inside out is just crushing it at, at the box office? Do we get Inside Out, maybe in the Imagination Pavilion? Do we get some sort of presence? Do we get a, a new um, World Showcase country? Uh, we've been talking about that forever. Those are things that I, I don't think are going to happen, but I I would love to get a Spaceship Earth refurb announcement. Um, Hollywood Studios has really had the most investment, right, of any part mm -hmm. with Galaxy's Edge and Toy Story Land and Mickey and Minnie's. I don't I don't imagine there's going to be a ton announced for there, but maybe we get a rebranded, rethemed Aerosmith, maybe Animation Courtyard news. Like, why are we still having Star Wars character meet and greets in Animation Courtyard? <gasps> yeah, that makes no sense. Like, let's let's bring uh, this to Galaxy's Edge and make it organic, right? Let's make these mm -hmm. character interactions, you know. Yeah, let's let's cut the timelines for Galaxy so that way, let's make it all Star Wars. You know, I, I am all for that. Like I keep saying, I don't care about the timeline at all. Mm. Make Smuggler's Run. Let me go into the second Death Star and blow that up, and I will ride that thing on a loop all day long. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm done with coaxium at this point. I <laughs> I know. At least give us a new mission. My gosh. And and if it's outside the timeline, no, I don't think fans are going to care at all. Oh, we know. We'll welcome it. We'll be cheering. <laughs> um. So I don't expect a lot with Hollywood Studios. I think I think if we move over to Magic Kingdom, we're probably going to get Beyond Big Thunder. What's that going to mm -hmm. be? Is it going to be? You know, there's been rumors of. Radiator Springs Racers back there. Mm. And aesthetically, that fits with Big Thunder. Mm -hmm. But here's, you remember my caveat earlier about Clone Land? Yes. Mm -hmm. I would absolutely love either in Hollywood Studios or beyond Big Thunder to have the entire Cars Land in Florida. The entire, oh, you're going to take California Adventures. Only good thing, huh? <laughs> it is my favorite land. Walking back in there at nighttime. I, it's just a great hang. The vibe of that land, mm -hmm. especially at night, is so cool. And and the rides, you know, they try to do it with alien swirling saucers at Hollywood Studios. It doesn't match with Mater. The Mater ride, mm -mm. the Mater ride is just, it's the same exact mechanics, but it is is much more fun. And then the, yeah, it's more charming and more fun at the music and you know, Mater himself talking. It's great and yeah. Cars Land is a vibe at night, especially with the lighting ceremony each evening. It's a, it's a really cool stuff to just hang out and just, even if you did nothing, it's great to sit there and people watch and eat an ice cream or popcorn or something. Yeah. So, like, if they just bring Raider Springs Racers, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be thrilled if they bring the entire Cars Land. I know there's some pushback on that. They would rather that be at Hollywood Studios. I, that's fine, too. But are we, are we going to get a Villains Land? Is it going to be... Is the theming of Frontierland just going to become a hodgepodge? I, mm -hmm. I don't know. Right now, Tiana's has, has created this kind of little mini uh, New Orleans square 
And especially if they get rid of Pecos Bill and make it into, you know, a, a beignet and a Creole and a, and a Cajun restaurant, I'm, I'm, mm. I would really love that. Um, but I don't know. There's been so many ideas floated for Beyond Big Thunder. I think we probably get some news about that at, at D23, I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I hope so, and maybe even a start date or something. Goodness gracious, yeah. Uh, do we get a nighttime parade? Do we get drones incorporated into a, a show? I don't know. Um, and then the other interesting thing is that Imagineers have filed some, some uh, patents for uh, a Polynesian outrigger canoe that looks very much like what you see in Moana. Mm -hmm. Could, could Moana be coming to Adventureland? Uh, there's there's the land available for it in between uh, Jungle Cruise and, and Pirates. Do we get a do we get a Moana themed uh, boat ride? Uh, and and the boat if if you if you see anything about that permit, um, the boat has omnidirectional movement. It's not just a linear ride through the through the. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so look exactly like the thing Moana rides her raft. So that'd be yeah. very interesting. Man, because yeah, that would be nice. Because yeah, like Journey of Water doesn't do you know, Moana that much justice. I feel like she does have this nice, massive attraction. So whether it's Epcot or Adventureland, uh, hopefully she will get that. Uh, because uh, Moana is my favorite Disney princess. So I feel like she's some representation. Yeah, it's we got to see that premiered on uh, one of our Disney cruises. Um, it, it actually premiered while we we're on the cruise, so it holds a special place in our heart too. And then, and what it, do you think is coming to Disneyland? See, are we going to get an experience? Are we going to get a land for Avatar, a water based? Is mm -hmm. like I don't know if we're going to get pie in the sky, blue sky concepts for Disneyland because Disneyland Four just passed a couple mm. months ago. Do they already have stuff ready to go because they knew it was going to pass? Or are they still working on the zoning aspects of, you know, taking parking garages and transforming those into park uh, areas? Um, I, I, The thing that they have talked most about out of Disneyland is the Avatar thing. And a lot of people are worried that it's mm -hmm. going to be a clone. I don't think it's going to be a clone. The concept art shows it's not a clone. I don't clone. think so. Yeah, it shows like the boat uh, and yeah. uh, different, totally different things. So, yeah. I... I don't know if Tomorrowland's been such a disaster out there for years. I I have an idea, and I know I think Tomorrowland should go back to Tomorrowland when the park opened. A mid yeah, that retro timeless feel, huh? Yeah, because like you can't do that at Magic Kingdom now because Tron is there. Mm -hmm. Tron would mm -hmm. never work with the retro mid-century kind of. I want those cartoonish rocket ships. I want I want to go back because it's so hard to predict the future, especially mm -hmm. we're walking. Do you think Walt could ever envision that we're walking through the parks with computers in our hands? <laughs> I know. He's probably, what the heck? <laughs> so, so I think going back in time and doing what people thought of Tomorrowland when the park opened would be a really great vibe. And it would set Disneyland apart. We're talking about all these cloned, Mm -hmm. You know, all these clone lands. Let's go back. Let's take Disneyland back to its roots. Is this is this the sort of thing that's going to happen? I don't know. I, you know, it could in. because the downtown Disney, the new stuff is all mid-century modern. So you never know. And the new entrance and the concept art that they never built for Tomorrowland was mid-century modern. So you never know. Um, the easy one out there is probably the Avengers Campus e-ticket attraction. What? You know, mm -hmm. I want concrete details on that. We've been actually waiting to come to Disneyland until we got until a little it's more. done. Well, at first, yeah, and then the last couple because of years, you'll be waiting for a while. <laughs> but when they first when they first announced, I was like, "Hey, let's just wait until that thing is in there," thinking that the they were going to get it done pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Now it's, it, we're realizing that that's just <laughs> that's a pipe dream right there. Um, <sighs> And then, you know, on, on a smaller scale, are we going to get a Walt animatronic? A lot of people have been talking about a Walt animatronic. Mm -hmm. I mean, if have you been able to have, – have you seen the videos of, of Tiana's or are you a spoiler freak kind of person? Um, oh, no, I've seen all the videos of Tiana's. Okay, so 
when, when we got on that, we were evacuated within the first half of that ride, right before um, we were going to go down into the Afro-Cuban club. Mm-hmm. And Mondo was sitting right there. Uh, we got evacuated. But it, it gave me an opportunity to just see how great these A1000s are. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it'd be so cool. Is this a time we finally get a Walt animatronic? I think that would be phenomenal. Um, and then... What are they going to do for Disney's 70th? It's pretty late. We just had the 69th birthday. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that can be done in a year to celebrate the 70th anniversary of this park? I don't think so. I think for that one, though, bring back like a whole bunch of entertainment. Man, they got a new uh, parade back or a new fireworks show or a fireworks show or just have like some themed food and merchandise. I think it'll be like the 60th, but it's very entertainment heavy, which... I hope it's something like the 60th, because I loved the 60th anniversary. That was so great. I was having a blast, and that just shows and parades everywhere. So I hope it's something like the 60th anniversary. We were actually there for the 60th. It was our first trip to Disneyland, and we stayed in uh, in, in the hotel right there in uh, Grand Californian and had a blast. I, I didn't realize. I was expecting it to be like, oh, yeah, this could be like the Disney we know, and it was a completely different Everything about it, even the things that were familiar, were completely different. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, going on uh, Big Thunder was a completely different vibe, and we loved it. And so, yeah, you know, we shouldn't wait. We should make we should make plans to come out there in the next year or so. So, there's a you lot should of make our- plans to come out this holiday season. Well, we're actually going to be um, we're going to do for the first time uh, Mickey's uh, Merry uh, the, the the Merry Christmas party at Magic Kingdom. So we're going to be out there for about eight nights. Um, Ooh, yeah, in mid November last year we did uh, the uh, the Halloween stuff, and that was a great time. And we figured this year uh, we don't go to Disney so often in the uh, in the summer anymore. My wife was like, I can't do this anymore. It's too it's it's, it's hot, hot, you know. Yeah. Like- it's beautiful in the uh, winter time in, in both places here and Florida, so that's that's quite nice. Yeah, even we we've been out there every time in March, and the only bad part about coming out then is that they always have uh, the Grizzly River runs always down in in March. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, it's funny because it usually opens up like right at the end of March, so you always just miss it. I do. Um, and I really don't know. I don't know what's going to happen at the international parks. I mean. The other thing that we see in there in the, in the uh, Horizons promo is the two cruise ships, but they've already allowed, uh, they've already told us about, you know, the treasure and the adventure. Mm-hmm. And now they dropped this bomb on us that even Disney cast members had no idea was coming this, this uh, co op with the Oriental Land Company and bringing mm-hmm. Disney cruises to Japan. Um, so that is number one on our bucket list is to go to Tokyo Disney. And how great would it be? How great would it be to do a, a land and sea vacation out there? Um, to to go on, on a on a cruise ship run by the Oriental Land Company would be a really great. I I, I can't imagine Disney cruises are already fantastic, but I think mm-hmm. everything I hear about the Oriental Land Company and the way they run parks, I would love to to experience one of their cruises. Yeah, like a uh, Disney cruise from Japan would be. Absolutely flawless. Like, like, I feel like it would be like things that people would never even thought of before, but like exceptional stuff. So that's definitely on my bucket list as well. Because yeah, uh, yeah, there's that's incredible. And I think there maybe even they'll build a new port or more permanent port out here on the west coast. I think I think that's a rumor as well. So um, yeah, you guys only get the wonder. Um, yeah, and and we've actually been on the wonder when it's gotten to we've done wonder out of Galveston, Texas. Um, so anything west is always the wonder, but I think there's a huge market out in California mm-hmm. for for cruises. Because yeah, I'd go on, I'd go on more Disney cruises if they're out here because you know saves the plane flight and all that stuff. You know, you can go right down to Long Beach or San Diego, and it'll be right there. You know. Yeah, and and we've. We love going out of Galveston for that very reason, because it's a four to five hour drive for us rather than Mm -hmm. flying and spending, you know, 1200 bucks on airfare to get to Orlando. 
Yeah, it's like it's a, it's a really big difference. So, uh, and the cruise ship is one of their most you know, profitable segments of the company. So, no reason they want to just keep on expanding that over and over and everywhere else. You know? Yeah, I, I can't see why they wouldn't. Um, we went on our, our last cruise last year uh, and we went on the Wish and it was great. It was a great time. I pine for the older ships though, because the, the, the wonder is smaller. When you go to Castaway mm -hmm. Key, there's actually room to breathe when you get on the beach. But uh, when we when we uh, went there with the, on the wish, we got we got down to the beach probably around ten o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And packed. we had to go to the adult beach. Luckily, our son was old enough, and we went to the adult beach, was mm -hmm. which was phenomenal. So, what is the difference? Is there's there's just no kids? Is there something special at the adult beach? Can you get yeah, alcohol well, or like what? Everything is right next to the family beaches at Castaway mm -hmm. Key. You get on the tram, and when you get out there, you have you know some you can imbibe some adult beverages at some of the, the places out there, and they have a they have a, a, a you know all the food and everything that you want. But there's you can do bike rentals out there as well. But all the the real big excursions, the stingrays, you know, the water bikes, mm -hmm. uh, the sea dews, all that stuff. That's how we're at the family beach. And then they, the family beach also has a pretty great water slide out in the middle of the lagoon. Oh, okay. And the Delta beach, what's there? Well, they, they have food, they have places for adults to go and have, have their beverages. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's just sand and umbrellas and chaise lounges. And okay. So basically like, Oh, so uh, not a, uh just a relaxing beach it seems like yeah it's much more quiet it's it's for people i mean if you're going on a disney cruise you expect to have kids around you but mm -hmm. there there are adults that go on these cruises and and they they like their quiet time as well so mm -hmm. it's just a place for them to go and, and get away from it all hmm. makes sense well hey <laughs> sounds great to me but man josh it was great having you on on your youtube channel debut how was it how'd you like it man you you put me at ease it, it was it was like having a conversation with a friend so i appreciate that i don't like how fast the time went by it was almost 47 48 minutes so far That's, man i'm like oh i'm like oh shoot we'll have to have you come back on for part two or something because boy i have so much stuff i want to talk to you about um absolutely i'd love to on. yeah oh, great well everyone make sure to go check out Diservations. I keep saying Diservations. Diservations.com. Updates from Universal Disney and more. And stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel because we'll be having Josh back on for a part two of um, this conversation sometime in the next couple of weeks. When and maybe oh maybe after D twenty three is over, we can compare predictions and see what actually happened. And then still we're gonna talk Six Flags, a whole bunch of good stuff. So stay tuned. Subscribe and. Have a fantastic day. Oh, what happened? There we go.